Hello. And welcome to the Aron Software Channel. In this video we'll demonstrate how to set up a new HTTP channel. We'll also quickly walk through some of the most important settings. HTTP is a common way to integrate with cloud-based messaging providers. Many of whom offer more than just SMS. For instance, they may offer RCS, WhatsApp or other instant messaging options as well. HTTP is also very fast. You can send hundreds or even thousands of messages per minute using an HTTP integration. It's easy to set up HTTP-based integrations with the Aron SMS server. To start creating a new HTTP channel, open up the Aron SMS server manager. Inside the manager, navigate to the channels page by clicking on channels in the configuration part of the left tree view. Click on new channel to pop up the new channel selection window. This window shows all of the available channel types. Since we're looking to set up an HTTP channel we'll scroll down to select HTTP SMS. Now double click to open the HTTP SMS wizard. The first page of this wizard allows you to select a provider preset. If your provider is not in the list, you can select custom settings. For this example we'll select the preset for Twilio. Let's fill in the details to complete the Twilio preset parameters. Click on Next to continue. The channel page has general channel information. Set the name and description of the channel. Select if the channel can send in or receive. And set the daily send limit for this channel. Click on Next to accept the default values. The Endpoints page lets us set up the send parameters and a receive endpoint for this channel. The send URL is the URL of your provider. Click on the magnifying glass icon to review the full send URL. You can add message fields to the URL by clicking on add placeholder. We're not using any placeholders here because with Twilio the send URL contains only our account number. The check in the use post checkbox indicates that we're sending an HTTP post body. Click on the magnifying glass icon to review the full post body. You can add message fields to the post body by clicking on Add Placeholder. Placeholders are replaced with the actual message value at the time of sending. If you're using a post body you must specify the content type of the post body. You must specify a public IP address when using either the delivery report URL or the media URL placeholders in the URL or the post body. This is because in both of these cases we generate a link back to our HTTP channel and for this we'd need to know how to access our server from the outside. Check support delivery reports if you request delivery reports from the URL or the post body. The local endpoint is where this HTTP SMS channel listens for incoming messages and delivery reports. You can choose which protocol to use, HTTP or HTTPS, as well as which IP address and port to listen on. You can have multiple HTTP SMS channels listen on the same port. The HTTP channel makes use of the secure HTTP.sys subsystem that's part of the Windows operating system. This is why you'll need to configure your endpoint in your operating system to continue. Click on Configure to configure the endpoint. This opens the NetSH Express setup, which is a front-end to the NetSH command line tool. Here the default action clears any existing access control listings on the same endpoint URL and creates a new one for this HTTP channel. Click on the green play button to complete your endpoint configuration. All green checkmarks indicate this action was successful. Click on close to continue with the HTTP SMS wizard. Click on next to continue. The response page specifies how the response to our HTTP request should be parsed. If parse response is checked, we can parse the response to extract a message reference or error message. Leave parse response unchecked if you just need to know if the response indicates success or failure. In the case of Twilio we want to parse the HTTP response, so we'll check parse response. If we're parsing the HTTP response we need to know how the response is structured. This can be either XML, JSON or form parameters. In the case of form parameters we can get a value by specifying the name of that value. In the case of XML we can use XPath expressions and in the case of JSON we can use JSON path expressions. 
Both XPath and JSON path are standard ways of finding a value in a document. Find links to XPath and JSON path tutorials in the description below. Since we're using a preset we know the response is structured as JSON, and all JSON path expressions are already filled in. Behind the example button is an example response from Twilio. It's very convenient to have an example response available so you can test your JSON path or XPath expressions as you enter them. Enter your path expression and click on the magnifying glass button to test if the expression yields your expected value based on the example response. Click on next to continue. This page specifies how to receive and parse delivery reports. The endpoint URL shows where your provider can send delivery reports. If you've configured your endpoint to use any IP address, this URL contains a plus character where your external IP should be. Our Twilio preset was configured to expect delivery reports to be structured as form parameters. As you can see, you can leave a path empty when a value isn't present in the HTTP body. Click on example to review the example from the Twilio preset. Click on next to continue. This page specifies how to receive and parse incoming messages. This works exactly like parsing delivery reports on the previous page. The first field is the endpoint that you'll need to configure in the dashboard of your provider as a webhook for incoming messages. Remember that if you've configured your endpoint to use any IP address, this URL contains a plus character where your external IP should be. Our Twilio preset expects messages to be structured as form parameters. The available path values have all been filled in already. Click on example to review the example from the Twilio preset. Click on next to continue. On the authentication page you can choose between basic HTTP authentication, or using a custom authorization header. You can also specify unique proxy settings for this channel. Check use proxy to specify them. Click on next to accept these settings. The message defaults page is where you specify default values for new messages on this channel. The address is copied from the first page where you configured your preset. Click on finish to create the channel. You'll see the channel status turn to green to indicate that the channel is online. We've now set up a new HTTP SMS channel. This concludes our tutorial on how to set up an HTTP channel in the Aron SMS server. Try it for yourself by downloading the trial version from the Aron software website.